A leading Second Amendment advocate warns about so-called red flag laws threatening gun rights. One America's John Hines reports from Washington. Dr. John Lott, the author of More Guns, Less Crime, told One America News that new gun control measures proposed in Congress could allow authorities to mistakenly identify people likely to use a gun to commit a crime and preemptively restrict their access to firearms. Red flag laws, these are also called extreme risk protection orders, and it's allowing judges to kind of predict whether or not somebody's likely to go and commit a crime or uh, commit suicide, and on the basis of whether they think, you know, it's a little bit more than a hunch or it's possibly could happen, then they can go and issue a, a warrant to take away the person's guns. You end up with a lot of people accidentally uh, that you, you get in the net. Lott, who is also president of the Crime Prevention Research Center, was briefing congressional staff members on the pitfalls of the legislation. Most of these red flag laws not only allow law enforcement, but in many states, relatives, roommates, ex-spouses, and other concerned parties to petition judges to restrict access to firearms. Fourteen states have now adopted red flag laws. Nine states alone adopted these laws last year after the Parkland shooting. Empirically, they haven't accomplished what people would like them to. You know, we want to try to predict whether somebody's going to go and commit a crime are going to commit suicide. That's pretty hard to do, particularly when you're just having, do I, I guess that there might be a chance that they're going to do that. Writing laws that will accurately predict who will commit a crime is a hard thing to do. And Lott's research of the crime data from the entire United States, as well as mass public shootings and suicide data for the U.S. from 1970 to 2017, seems to indicate these laws are ultimately ineffective. What I've done is I've looked at the crime data and you can go and see do the states that have adopted these laws, do their suicides fall relative to states that don't have them? Or is their deaths from mass public shootings fallen relative to states that don't have these laws? And you just don't see any of those benefits when you're comparing the states that are changing the laws to the ones that aren't. Lod says that both Florida Senator Marco Rubio and California Senator Dianne Feinstein have introduced legislation to provide for extreme risk protection orders. John Hines, One America News, Washington. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand.